Welcome back everyone. This is Jeffrey Reynolds from Reynolds Runabouts. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be showing you some of the work that I did on the fairing of the transom repair. So this will be part three of a transom repair I wasn't expecting um, a month ago, but I've addressed it and it's proven to be quite um, useful, not only in telling me what went wrong in 2002, but also um, how to fix it and how to show you how to do that so that I'm a lot more comfortable going forward with the integrity of the transom and the glass and the core. I also, uh, I've been traveling, so this video comes a little later than our once a week episodes. I know I've gone to two and we'll be going to three week um, gaps until I'm done traveling. So let's get to work. So I've got the surface cleaned, both of the vacuum, and then I went ahead with the uh, echo solvent, which is made by Total Boat. It's kind of like a acetone alternative. Um, they both smell bad. I wear a mask for both. Can't get around it. It's a good cleaning agent. It does the surface prep that you need done in addition to sanding, and it'll give you a guaranteed um, clean surface for connection. So I made up more uh, total fare than usual because I have a lot of space to cover here. I'm going to trowel it on with my larger um, uh, trowel. Then I've got a, it's, it's technically a drywall trowel that uh, covers large surfaces and it's because I've got a large surface. I want to make sure that this is the trowel I use. Um, it's going to connect these edges, and that's what I want. I want to be able to, to cover the, um, the middle, but to have the tool land on the edges that I know are fair and straight so that it will fare in the um, depressions in the area I repaired. should give me a pretty good um, look, and it will do the job of screeding off the, the, the total fare I don't need. You know, and it's... It's just simply putting it on, and then I'll do some screeding for you. I won't have to show you the whole thing. You kind of get it after the first, <laughs> the first couple pulls, but you just get it on the surface. You, you're going to want to make it deep at this area. You, you know, you can tell when you're doing your work that you've got areas that are going to need a little more than normal, and I'm going to have to do, I'm sure, multiple batches. I didn't want to put a lot together because this stuff gets hard sooner than you ever think it will, and I don't want to waste any. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of be conservative in my first approach. I also know this is going to be the deep area, and um, that is going to get a lot of the, of the, of the first um, batch of compounds, so I'll go ahead and just get that on there. And you know, like I said before, you don't want to put too much in the areas that you already know are fair because that's just more sanding. So try to be conscious of that without taking too much off because the trowel is going to be doing a lot of work here in a minute. So I got a good, good batch of the total fare on there now, and I'm going to take the, you know, the straight edge part, and you're just going to want to push it or pull following that edge, and you can see some of the areas that are still deeper. I have to get up in here yet. And then you can just push this over to the next section. You already got it made up, you might as well use it. And if you've done drywall or concrete, there's a lot of similarities here, especially drywall. And the tools, you don't have to buy special tools to put fairing compound on most boats because it's there's a lot of similarities in construction and the trades that transfer over to boat building as well, so which is also a trade. Um, so yeah, there you go. I'm kind of seeing some of the areas that are getting filled. I also noticed there was kind of a, I would say a hook, but um, this transom wasn't as straight as I, or flat as I thought it was when I did it in 2002. So I found some areas that were, especially the area I had cut out that was 
depressed more than it should have been. Um, but again, experience. I was a lot younger and didn't know as much. I had YouTube hadn't really been out, so you weren't able to watch experts um, like we have now with like Andy Miller from Total Bowworks today and other professionals like that. You can see over here, this is some of the areas that I built up. They're popping through. But there's also a lot of green, and that is, you know, you can only get so deep with your fiberglass mat before it's too deep and you end up sanding it off. So you're sand sanding off expensive resin and glass when you really should have just jumped to the fairing compound stage, and that's where I got. So I'm gonna keep working on this, and then the next time we meet, um, at least on this video, I will be doing the fairing process with a longboard sander. I'm gonna try to remedy some of the things that I um, didn't catch in 2002, and that's using a long sander that will give me that fairing from top to bottom on this transom versus a you know a five and a half inch orbital sander would be down inside of this repair a lot more than I would like. I want it to be starting and ending on these flat spots and, and then you know finding the fairing combo and getting flatter every time I do it. So back to work. As you can see my total fair filling fairing compound has hardened and it will be will be easy to sand now because it is so hard. If I had wanted to put on another coat, um, there's, a, there's a point at which this fairing compound, you can put your fingernail into it a little bit, and it's still considered what they call green and or ready for what they call a hot coat, meaning a second coat, much like the way fiberglass epoxy, you can put it down if there's, if there's a little bit of greenness in the fiberglass resin, you can still put on another coat without having to abrade it or clean it with the acetone or soap and water with epoxy, you can go ahead and just put another coat on. I didn't because I didn't really know how much more I needed and, this, and versus wasting it, I decided to go ahead and just wait till it fully hardened. So now I'm going to use, instead of an orbital sander because my orbital sander is five and a half inches and it's going to go into this area that I repaired so the chances of me dishing it out because the disc is smaller than the repair, um, I've chosen to use um, a long board. These are flexible long boards made by DuraBlock. You can get them in different um, sizes. I have three different sizes. And here's the big job. You can use this one when you want to do uh, decks. I use these for decks or large flat spots on the top sides or the sides of a boat. For varnish, you can really get a nice stroke. And what I do is I buy Merca brand sandpaper it comes in this uh, width on you know 40 or 80 foot rolls and it's self-adhesive so it goes right on the back of this foam. This foam has just a little bit of flexibility but not enough where it's going to flex terribly into this space that I've uh, repaired. So it's gonna give me a very flat surface as I'm gonna hit just the top of the repair and then just the bottom of the transom. So it will give me a nice fairing direction so I can go sideways because I'll be working from down. This is a very awkward position to work on this transom. So I'm gonna be standing up when I do it so I can get a lot of push and pull like almost like a, a rip saw or a crosscut saw. So I'm going to be doing that. So um, I'm going to get at that with 80 grit, which is my uh, grit of choice at this stage. 60 I use to grind down. 80 is now used for fairing, and I don't want to really get into this other paint too deeply. So 80 is my um, choice at this point. So I'll get to work.
I've completed the first longboard long foam pad sanding with 80 grit um, sandpaper and I can still see and you can as also you can also see some low spots very shallow um, but I don't want to go into the uh, opposite sides of the repair you can see I've, I've got into the first coat of uh, which would have been probably the original clear gel coat of the boat so that's there and then I'm hitting white or the primer so I know that I'm getting close and it shows me that I need to put in more filler into this low spot but I'm very happy that um, for the most part it's very it's very minor additions of total fare uh, by total boat and I'll go ahead and just put another application in and it'll be another light sanding that took me about an hour of longboarding and that's that's normal you don't want to be too aggressive with the, the orbitals there are tools out there for a price that you can get that do that work for you flexi steel makes a um, not only a set of several uh, pieces that you can use for fairing different sizes um, sanding different sizes that have a flex they have little shocks if you want to call them that allow you to go to the contours like on the you know the camber of this deck would be perfect if you're doing a wood deck um, and then they have a powered version of that longboard that I have that um, not only has a vacuum on it but it has a reciprocal action on it that would save you a lot of you know man hours and sweat but that's that's something you have to invest in um, maybe someday um, I don't have that much to do where I need to have those sorts of tools yet but it would certainly be nice if your shoulders are hurting you're older and you just don't want to do that kind of labor that would be a tool to invest and in. I'll leave the link for flexi steel tools uh, in the comment section below and you can look at them so I'm going to get back at the uh, clean this up with acetone put on another really thin coat in areas that it needs and then um, I will sand it in addition to completing the fairing application on the bottom here um, <clears throat> while I'm here I was gonna show you how I am gonna put um, a ceiling component into any of my through hole fittings so the first one in the past I've noticed in all the wood boats I've worked on or even glass with the wood transom and the glass you're these are the the stern eyes are used mostly for tie downs on trailers uh, smaller boats you can use them to tie up the dock skiers if you wanted to do that um, even when the the hole is tight there's a lot of working going on and it, it creates a void in there eventually and I don't want to introduce any more water than I have to so what I've devised is I take my um, my injector and hypodermic and what I want to do is I, I put some in there to um, to seal it and what I can do with that is that I um, the larger ones I use a brush what I did with the um, this area I'm going to use what they call uh, bushings or sleeves and the um, so here's the stern eye I did this in the bow eye too the stern eye will fit over that and it will not be able to when I push it in there it'll be a tight fit and there won't be any working going on in that wood and glass creating a void or, or breaking my really nice paint job um, so what I'm gonna do is I I put some uh, you know you put the the resin is in there to not only help seal it but it also will help it um, adhere this sleeve to the inside of that transom giving it a, hopefully a really nice um, watertight uh, seal that I can count on so I made it just a little oversized so I could get some resin in there to soak it in and then I put I turn the sleeve and I just push it in and I'm gonna make it fair so I can get my paint in there 
and uh, it's right up against the glass so the paint will have a little bit more around that and then my sleeve will go in there and it will go into the right up against the glass and I'll have a really nice uh, fit. I will also put in, uh, here, fill up my little, just around the perimeter. I'll put some more fairing compound in this area as well, just to make sure I have a really good seal. But I'll also put like 4200 or something similar that um, around the shaft of this eye that will make it again more waterproof, but removable. The sleeve, I'm not as in, worried about being removed, and not in my lifetime anyways, um, because it's, I consider it to be permanent. I'm going to just, just, just to, um, adhere to it being permanent and just go ahead and, and make it part of the boat with the epoxy. Um, when it comes to the larger holes, this is going to be my bilge pump through hole fitting. I'm going to use a paintbrush chip brush, sorry, and I'm going to paint the inside of that. Now this one won't get anything right now. I'm going to wait till the boat is all done to put my um, pieces in here because this will either have a white or a chrome outer hull piece in addition to the bilge pump um, on the inside of the boat. I'm just going to use my unthickened resin and I'm just going to paint it in there and I might even come back later today and do this again because the goal is to make it waterproof and and it doesn't have to be pretty it just has to be waterproof and um, if it pools on the bottom which it shouldn't I um because I'm going to keep soaking it as much as I can this next few minutes uh, when the fitting goes in there, I might have to go in there with some sandpaper and just kind of maybe uh, fair it a little bit so the fitting is, is good. And that will also get 4200 uh, as a sealant, but also it allowed me to get it out if I ever had to, but it'll give me a really good seal and even more waterproofing. This will also happen down here at the... These are the through-hole fittings that are the drains. These have all been cleaned out with acetone, so you know. Um, this will be the drain that is always open. This is where the, the motor well is, and it will allow me to put a nice chrome or a brass um, drain plug in there. Even though it's not a plug, it'll just be a drain. This will always be open, so I'm really going to want that one to be sealed. There's another one down here. When I get done fairing, I will rebore that out. That's what they call the bilge drain, and that one is at the very bottom of the of the boat. It allows the bilge to drain under the floor. That will have a, a, a permanent plug, but it'll get the same treatment. I'm just going to keep saturating these. Um, and I'm also going to want that one to be very watertight. So I have one more. Uh, bushing to put in for my um, the other eye. So I'll go ahead and carefully put some resin in there. Just try to get it in there. It's an inch and a half, so you got quite a bit to go there. I'll spin it around, get it nice and gooped up, gently push it in. And all the stuff that's kind of coming out, I'll keep rubbing that on there till I can get a nice seal. And again, that'll get fared. Um, and then I'll have a nice watertight boat and my fittings will be tight and won't work against me through the life of the boat. After the second application of Total Boat's Total Fair, I am happy with the, the fairing. I, um, I've got that where I want it. Um, then I was moving on up to the top of the transom, even though this transom was not originally fiberglassed. I figured from the delamination um, from the original and good practice that I would wrap it and then wrap it all the way into the, to the well, making it more waterproof too, in addition to having the drain. Um, while doing that, the laminate, the original laminate, that I had used with my new core 
uh, cracks started to appear. Um, not exactly as bad as the lower part, but uh, a minor separation. So I chased it all the way down, and you can see there was some lam delamination um, probably two, three inches down from that lip, and that might have been just some wetness I got in there in the last 20 years that I wasn't able to prevent. Or um, because the glass is so shiny, I'm assuming that it never did get um, connected uh, properly back in 2002. So I'm going to continue chasing these down. Uh, they're very close to hitting uh, good adhesion uh, from core to glass outer. So I'll keep chasing those down. I'll fair those out and then go ahead and put some new, um, maybe some 1708, maybe the first layer I'll put some 1708 for strength and I'll finish up with a couple um, layers of the chop at strand to give it uh, more of a smoother finish and fair it into my transom. And then once that's done or very close to it, I'll wrap the 1708 around the top of the transom and also uh, put some chop strand mat on top of that to ferret out, make it nice and smooth. And um, then again, hit that with fairing compound. I will go ahead and fix this uh, issue. And then the next video, I will show how I'm gonna wrap it around the transom and make that a, um, make those radiuses correct, make sure it lies flat and give you a good uh, transom top protected from the water. And I also have a transfer protector that the motor will sit on that will help with that. So that'll be the next video. So thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm hoping that you're a subscriber already. If not, uh, feel free to do that. And if you like the video and are finding these uh, episodes both entertaining and useful, uh, please hit the like button and I will see you next time. Thank you.